Today's video is about this launch pad that I built for my fin controlled model rocket. It's designed to stabilize my rocket during the first few moments of its flight when airspeed is too low for the fins to be effective. This is done with a rail which constrains the rocket's orientation while it's mounted to it. It gives the rocket time to pick up speed so that by the time it leaves the rail, the aerodynamic forces will be sufficient for stabilization. I used Open Rocket to calculate the minimum rail length and found that 2 meters should cover all the motors that I may end up flying. Now, 2 meters is actually quite tall and I don't really want to bring a step ladder to every launch. I decided to hinge the rail such that the rocket can be loaded horizontally before being brought vertical for launch. And for no reason other than that it would be quite cool, I decided to motorize this system. I've really enjoyed building unnecessarily complex launch pads in the past, so I thought I'd do so again. But maybe I'm just compensating for my first DIY launch pad. Anyway, my plan was to use a motor and a gearbox to automatically raise and lower the launch rail. Instead of using a massive industrial motor, I wanted to use a NEMA 17 stepper motor with a worm gear system. This is the sort of motor that you'd find in a 3D printer, and it can't provide nearly enough torque for this application. A worm gear system is used to dramatically increase torque while eliminating back driving, which should prevent the rail from falling when power is disconnected. However, even with a 50 to 1 gear reduction, the output has slightly less torque than what's required. Instead of increasing the gear ratio, I decided to use some springs to provide some of the torque. This would have the added benefit of reducing torsion on the shaft and other stresses in the system. So to actually make this monstrosity, I used Fusion 360 to design the parts and printed them in PLA on my budget printer. The 2 meter long launch rail is a 2020 extrusion, which has these slots in each side which a rocket can be mounted to. This fits into this 3D printed part, which has an 8mm shaft going through it, secured with flange couplings. This gets sandwiched between two large bearings so that it can rotate 90 degrees from vertical to horizontal. You may be noticing that lots of the parts are split up into smaller pieces and are then bolted together after the fact, and this is because of my limited print volume on the Ender 3. The springs pull this central hinged part towards these large static parts. This red device is a limit switch and it will detect when the rail is in the upright position. Since stepper motors are open loop, meaning they cannot observe their output angle, the limit switch will provide a reference for up and stop the mechanism from trying to destroy itself. The legs of the launch pad, which will be four 600mm long 2020 extrusions, slot into these fixtures here. The gearbox is then installed on the main 8mm shaft and a healthy amount of thread lock and grease is added before sealing it all up. After finishing the mechanical side of the project, I moved on to creating an electrical system to control everything. Using KiCad, I designed a PCB with a microcontroller, radio, high power outputs for igniters, various IOs, and a stepper motor driver with adjustable micro stepping and current limits. PCBWay, who have kindly sponsored this video, manufactured and assembled it for me. With PCBWay, you can go from design to a professionally fabricated board in a matter of days simply by uploading your Gerber files. If, like me, you want to get your boards fully assembled, you can use their turnkey assembly service to have PCBWay source, place and solder every component on your board. This is also incredibly easy to use, as PCBWay accepts a variety of pick and place and BOM formats. So, if you're interested in getting your designs manufactured, visit PCBWay.com or click the link in the description. The PCB is mounted in a box on the front of the launch pad, and the stepper motor, limit switch, action button and LiPo are all connected. This front panel I made is then screwed on. It has a 4 line LCD to display some information about the pad's state, a buzzer and two switches. One turns the pad on and off, and the other arms and disarms the igniter output. I then wrote some code in C to implement all of these features, including drivers for the stepper motor, radio and LCD. After mounting the 2 meter long 2020 extrusion and the flame deflector, I set everything up for a test. The first test, lowering and then raising the rail without a rocket loaded onto it. One of the key selling points of this step motor that I bought was its low noise operation, so I was excited to test that too.
Okay, so while that wasn't quite as quiet as advertised, the stepper motor works well and rotates the rail without skipping any steps. The springs seem to be doing their job too, extending as the rail is lowered to take some of the load off the poor little motor. Now on to the next test, seeing if it can still work with a 500 gram rocket attached. The rocket simply slides onto the rail, which is easy to do when in the horizontal position. Here we go. Great, no problems there. And going down? It all works pretty well. However, this rod looks like a bit of a risk for low-flying aircraft. To address this issue, I connected three 5 watt LEDs, some resistors and a couple of metres of wire to my PCB. Then secured the lights at the top of the rail. Another critical feature of this launch pad is its ability to light rocket motors, which is done by flowing current through an igniter like this. I do this using an N-channel MOSFET, which acts as a switch that can either leave the negative igniter terminal floating or pull it to ground. The MOSFET is controlled by a pin on my microcontroller and is pulled down to avoid any misfires. There's also a simple voltage divider circuit connected to an ADC channel, which is used to check for continuity. The resistors in the voltage divider are quite large to limit the quiescent current and again prevent misfires. So that's about everything for my massive motorised launch rail. Perhaps not quite as exciting as the usual videos, but I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to follow along with my rocketry projects, please consider subscribing. Thank you very much to PCBWay, please check them out in the video description, and thank you to my Patreon members for your continued support. Finally, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.